Have you ever felt? Are you listening? Damn. So I am totally excited today to talk about corn snake breeding. Why am I excited? Because while I was filming the video yesterday, this happened. You see that? The corn snakes are locked up. How awesome is that? Now I'm trying not to disturb them. I might uh, just close the tub now, but it's always awesome to see. It doesn't really get old, and then those eggs is even more exciting. And keep in mind that uh, that male's 14 years old, and he's still going at it. So we'll see uh, how the eggs turn up, and I mean, I'll keep you updated. While this may not be a giant deal, it is to me because I wasn't sure if it was going to happen. So this year, I tried a different way of breeding them, just because uh, the environmental factor. So I figured I'd give it a try. And I wasn't concerned with whether it would work or whether it wouldn't, but I just want to see if it would work. First, we should start with the traditional way to breed corn snakes. So let's set the scene. It's December, and we have already waited about two to three weeks to make sure that our snakes have cleared all their bowels in order to prepare for brumation. What is brumation? Brumation is a hibernation-like state that cold-blooded reptiles go into when they prepare for winter. So this allows the reptiles' bodies to slow down, slow down all function in order for their to, them to survive through the winter. In order to replicate this process, we're gonna stay at a balmy 55 degrees. And we're gonna keep it at 55 degrees from December all the way to March. It's important to mention the fact that we're not feeding during this whole period. March hits and we're starting to begin the warm up. During this time, we're gonna check all of our animals to make sure that they maintained a healthy body weight, as well as there's no symptoms that may uh, cause concern. And now that you've ensured that they are all healthy body weight and ready to go, you are going to start feeding. When feeding begins, I'll usually start with smaller meals. So I might do, for my adults, I might do a small to medium mouse and then do that every three days, increasing bigger meals that may come every five days. So they'll end up maybe getting a small rat, which is as high as you're gonna go for a corn snake, and doing that every five to seven days. It is important to realize when your snake shed because this will be a sign that the female is ready to breed. During this time, males will seem very restless and always be pacing across their enclosure. It means that that male is smelling that female that is developing eggs and is ready to breed. We will keep this busy feeding schedule up and then in between meals we will be starting to introduce pairs. As soon as we introduce the male to the female, you'll see the female glide past him and he will follow her and that's when the courtship will begin. After that copulation, you wanna pay close attention to the lower third of the female's body. You want to pay attention if there's any swelling in this section to the vent and then a good determining factor is actually the roundness of the belly. You'll see at first they are very flat bellied and then when you start seeing that protruding uh, roundness you start to know that you have a female that's developing eggs. If all has gone well it is now June and your female has laid eggs. Now you take your beautiful clutch of 12 to 24 eggs, put them on a mixture of water and vermiculite. Just do it so that when you squeeze the ball, just a few drops of water will come out and that will be fine. We will be keeping these eggs at a temperature between 78 degrees and 82 degrees. One eternity later. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh. 
So when I moved to Texas, I realized that it wasn't gonna be as easy as it was in maybe upstate New York to get to 55 degrees to brewmate my corn snakes. So I decided I was gonna have to do something different. I don't really have a space that I can cool to 55 degrees in here. So what I had is the, you know, the two variables that determine when the snakes breed or you know, what triggers them to create follicles and develop eggs and breed. So that would be feeding, and then that would be temperature, of course. So I knew I wasn't gonna be able to get all the way down in temperature, but I knew that if I dropped the temperature, turned the heat off, I could keep it, you know, somewhere in between just room temperature, 68 to 72. I was afraid that it was going to keep their bodies operating at too quick of a speed, have their metabolism a little bit too high, and maybe they would waste away some, some muscle and body mass. So I decided to uh, do that, not feed them, but keep an eye real close to see if there were any changes in their physical state. So I did just like, uh, just like a normal breeding. I put them down in December, and then I brought them up in the beginning of March. During that whole time, I was checking on the male and the female, and there didn't seem to be any signs of you know them losing body mass or them having any type of ill health. So. I took them out of brumation in uh, the beginning of March and heated them back up to uh, 85 degrees, fed them vigorously, you know, gave the, the female small, small mice, ramped it up, got the small rats, same with the male, and uh, they put on a good amount of body mass. And so I knew that the female was gonna be ready for breeding. So that, that first shed that she had, I thought, okay, this is the time to start breeding. Put them together, nothing. I was a little concerned that you know, this wasn't gonna work out, but kept on pairing them, feeding them, waiting, you know, three days after the eight, pairing them again, then waiting a couple days, feeding them, pairing them again, and I finally got a lock. You know, it is April now. It's April 6th, and I got a, my first lock on April 5th, and, um, you know, we'll see if it comes to anything. You know, I can't call it yet, but the fact that they got to breed is a good sign. Um, the male just won't breed usually if a female's not, not developing follicles. And she, and she is showing every sign of uh, developing follicles and that she's gonna produce a clutch. So it looks pretty good, but uh, this has been my way to kind of hack my environment because I realized that Texas doesn't get that cold in winter. So um, I had to drop it down less. Now, I wouldn't do this all the time. If I could, I would go down to 55. It's definitely going to be more of a controllable uh, way to breed them for sure. But, you know, I had the opportunity to experiment, see if this worked, and so far it seems like it does. I mean, I'll keep you guys updated. But So thank you guys for watching. Please comment, like, subscribe, do whatever you want. And if you watch this far, you're on the team.